I did another video today. We got a three part video, not really like three parts, but like more like it's gonna be three consecutive videos back to back to back. And you no, know, I'm not gonna really go into who are the creators I'm gonna be reacting to. But I know this first one is about. What's it about again? No, I'm just gonna show you. It's about the end of somebody's empire or career, whatever else it is. I mean, the last time I seen, last time I ever like did anything. Not even last time I saw anything about Salt Bay was that his food was absolute trash. That was the last thing I saw, and I was like, you know, I would never go to this restaurant ever in my life. So it shall be interesting to see how far this dude fell off. Because last time I really seen anything was like when he was on Inst when he first was on Instagram and he was doing vines and stuff like that. That was first saw it, and I was like, I don't know why people are so obsessed with this dude. I mean, like the meme is cool. But at the same time, who wants your arm bacteria on their food? <laughs> that was always my thing, I guess. Let's get, let's go ahead and get into the video. Restaurant closures, rapidly declining reviews, and his lowest growth on Instagram in over six years. Things have gone from bad to worse for Salt Bay, which is best observed by looking at each controversy up until this unfavorable point. His first time in hot water came just months after Salt Bay first went viral, occurring when fans scrolled back through his Instagram to find this photo, commemorating the life of Fidel Castro in the days after his death. At around the same time, Salt Bay had recently opened a steakhouse in Miami, a city to which approximately 500,000 Cubans had fled to as a result of Castro's leadership. Some people just don't think. To post pics like this and then open a restaurant in Miami. Really? I just called and cancelled two reservations and told them how I feel about their salt guy and his post. Picture posted a few days after Castro's death. Nice thought. WTF. He should open in Cuba and sprinkle his salt over there. The comments on the post itself echoed a similar sentiment, leading Salt Bay to remove the picture. However, he'd find himself in a similar controversy less than a year later. In September 2018, Salt Bay came under scrutiny once again for providing a feast to the Venezuelan president, who governs a country in which 64% of people have reported losing significant amounts of weight, 11 kilos or 24 pounds on average, amid worsening food shortages. Venezuela is really doing that bad right now, bro. That's crazy. I mean, they're that low on food, and like it's really that that hard for them to to live. Like they're actively losing weight without warranting, like without without actually wanting to lose weight. I mean, like that's tough. That that's really tough. I'm not trying to say that in a funny manner at all. It's just the way it's coming off. But like, I don't understand why you're going after the person that provided it. I mean, you should go after the person that is the in charge of the country. It's not the person who provides the food. It's fall for real. It's more like the person that was in charge of the country's fault. It's like if we go bankrupt, who are we blaming it on? Are we blaming it on? Are we blaming it on the the buying of the the buying of missiles and the buying of good trading goods from China and stuff like that, or are we going to blame our government? I think we'll blame our government more than we would if we go bankrupt as a as a as a country as a country we go bankrupt I think we'll be blaming our government more than we'll be blaming China like that's the funny part about it though that's crazy 
Emirates. As a Venezuelan, it angers me seeing my president feasting on a meal while me and my family were starving. I cannot believe this video. This guy eating tomahawk steaks or whatever that is, and the people from his country dying of hunger. Food tastes so much better when you know the folks back home are starving. After the Venezuelan president then explained that Salt Bay had personally invited him to the restaurant, pro Never mind, I stand so far corrected. Protest broke out in front of Salt Bay's Miami restaurant with one sign reading, Did you know Salt Bay that in the time it took you to wine and dine dictator Maduro with your bloody meat, at least one Venezuelan child died of extreme malnutrition. However, this might not have even been Who's reading that long Who's reading that statement? That is way too long for being a protester. <laughs> Just put you're killing children. Like, what? I have to read a whole, like, it's not even a paragraph. Okay, I'm not gonna say it's a paragraph, but I gotta read a whole sentence and a half. Just get through that whole thing. Plus it's, I, I'm gonna guesstimate and say it's probably about like, Two, three hundred people. No, I say about two fifty people. Two fifty people standing outside of your restaurant, bro. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, I don't get on whoever I want to, because not everybody's perfect. Not even me. Salt Bay's biggest controversy for the month. Only eight days after these protests, a new article was posted reading, four tourists are set on fire at Instagram star Salt Bay's Istanbul restaurant, which had happened as a result of a fire show gone wrong. One of the tourists who'd been set on fire was a Czechoslovakian YouTuber and model named Tynas Tresnikova, who suffered burns to more than 35% of her body and can be seen with slight but visible burn scars on her Instagram even till this day. Her 23 minute video on the topic, Translating to the moment that changed my life is unfortunately spoken in Czechoslovakian without subtitles. However, an article posted a year after the incident stated that Tynus had received no compensation for the mistake and that the restaurant had instead destroyed all evidence related to the incident. For the month. Only eight days after these protests, a new article was posted reading Four tourists are set on fire at Instagram star Salt Bay's Istanbul restaurant, which had happened as a result of a fire show gone wrong. stated that Tynus had received no compensation for the mistake and that the restaurant had instead destroyed all evidence related to the incident. Salt Bay did eventually pay up. All right, well, that's GG to that dude, bro. We can go ahead and stop the video right here. Now nah, I'm just playing. We're going to go ahead and continue because this is entertaining for this, this sheer amount of stupidity that this guy is on. I mean, it, it's your responsibility to actually be a businessman in this situation and uh, say, we apologize for our incompetence and that we will inverse you with the damages dealt to you through our because it was our fault like at that point you're gonna lose a whole bunch of more money by not talking and it destroyed evidence bro what wait I don't know, bro. You're weird. Out $230,000 in compensation, although not to Tynus for permanently altering her appearance, but rather to four mistreated employees in Salt Bay's next big controversy. The four employees claim that Salt Bay was taking 3% from their total tips, which was followed by Salt Bay firing the four employees after. I think a restaurant owner should be taking tips, bro. You're a restaurant owner, you're a cook. I'm sorry, cooks. You cooks out there. Unless somebody is actually directing to the waiter, waitress, whoever else, say that I want to give this tip to the cook, then okay, that's acceptable. But otherwise, cooks. Mm, 
I'll say we because when I was working at Domino's, I didn't I didn't really get tips. So it was like we don't really get tips. That's the truth. So I don't think that it should be acceptable that a I want to say well off, a well off businessman that is known by millions through his Instagram personality or his Instagram presence should be taking 3% of your tips. That's crazy. Being confronted about it. As a result, the employees launched a wrongful termination lawsuit explaining that their former boss had an authoritarian, dictatorial attitude who doesn't care about local laws. They even suggested Salt Bay likened himself to Tony Montana and humiliated them on occasions in the lawsuit. Yet Salt Bay responded by stating, I don't get a share of the employees' tips. I've never done that in any of my restaurants. I was not satisfied with the performance of the four employees. They didn't match my understanding of work. They weren't as good as I wanted so I terminated their contract right away. Yet these four employees weren't the only ones claiming that they'd been mistreated while working for Salt Bay. A former employee at the Nusret restaurant in London described it as gold from the outside but shit from the inside, whilst another compared the working environment to the Hunger Games as staff never knew if they'd be fired during a shift, with a third likening the restaurant tour to a dictator. Former employee Frank Def Isn't that kind of sort of how Gordon Ramsay was? I mean, Gordon Ramsay was like that too. I guess it was just that. I don't know. I think. No, it has to be that Gordon Ramsay was so respected. And then that actually gave respect to the people that earned the respect. I don't know. I I, I don't know. I don't know. I, at this point, I'm just talking about my ass. Ooh, I just knocked over my mic, my mic again. At this point, I'm just talking about my ass. So let's continue. Fano stated that he was treated poorly as a result of being American, while another former manager explained his world was nothing but Instagram and fame. The sensation was him. He ended up getting this godlike complex, highlighting Salt Bay's next big problem. With massive artworks of his one viral moment and every third Instagram picture being him working out shirtless, it seems Salt Bay is just a bit too full of himself, and while some degree of ego might be necessary for success, he takes it to a whole new level. When it Interviewed by the Times in 2019, Salt Bay seemed convinced that every kid wanted to be him, stating, Now everybody wants to be a butcher because of me. Now, if you ask a kid, they want to be Salt Bay. They see me as an idol. I'm Nobody wanted to be like you. I mean, at least, at least in where I lived at in California, nobody even cared about you. We may have looked at your videos and we be we may have talked about you a couple of times, maybe retweeted a couple of your tweets, maybe re maybe we sent your meme I mean, not your memes. Maybe we yeah, maybe we memed you. But that's our mistake. That that's our mistake as a as a whole, meaning you, because it is clearly got into your head, bro. This is outrageous. I'm an inspiration to a lot of people in a very short period of time, also always taking the opportunity to brag about money. Salt Bay had posted an $8,000 bill as well as a different $47,000 bill, yet the picture that really kicked up a stink was the $167,000 bill posted to Salt Bay's Instagram with the title, Quality Never Expensive. The opulent bill mixed with his arrogant description prompted comments such as, I have eaten in your restaurant, quality is questionable, and I've eaten there, the food was not good. With this sentiment being echoed by countless different
people. YouTube channel Google Foods ordered the $2,000 steak before stating this. It was not what we expected. For two grand, I gotta say, I thought it would be way bigger. Also adding that the $275 tomahawk steak had been cooked incorrectly. That was rare even though we ordered medium rare. Now there's nothing wrong with rare steak, but if you order medium rare, you should get what you paid for. A different YouTuber, UA Eats, who was looking to give a purely objective review, stated that the waiter's performance was fun, yet the quality of the food was no better than any other steakhouse. On trip advice. Bacteria, man. I have to say it again, bro. Nobody wants your arm bacteria on their food, bro. That is pissing me off. Now it's making me itchy. Now, now it's making me itchy, bro. What am I supposed to do about that, bro? It's making me itchy. And a little bit more angry than what I already am. Just watching this video. Salt Saltbay's London restaurant is ranked at 15,200 out of 15,700 restaurants, with its rating of 2.5 stars, making it worse than 96.8% of all other restaurants in the city. The steakhouse features predominantly terrible and one-star reviews, with most complaining about horrible quality, bad service, and so incredibly expensive for such a bad quality of food. This guy was upset after the restaurant charged him 44 British pounds for four Red Bulls. However, at least he didn't call the police after what? finding out the price, which is what happened over in Florida. Whilst eating at Salt Bay Steakhouse in Miami, Dwayne Miranda ordered two standard $275 tomahawk steaks, yet he was instead unknowingly presented with two golden tomahawk steaks, being charged more than $5,000 for his meal when he eventually got to the counter. We ordered two tomahawk steaks and a rack of lamb for the table. When the bill came, we were shocked by the total. They insisted that we ordered the golden option and charged us $1,000 for each. We absolutely absolutely did not order that option. Although we did eat what was brought to the table thinking this was the normal presentation for our order, it was clear that the waiter was trying to take advantage of the situation. After disputing the misunderstanding with management, they decided to involve local law enforcement rather than do the right thing. We paid the disputed $5,000 bill to avoid further conflict, yet this was still minor in comparison Fuck no, I'm petty as hell. I'm taking, I'm making a civil suit. I'm suing. No. <laughs> no. Nothing to take me out of my money. Five, five grand? They took out five grand? Y'all know what five grand could do for somebody, bro? I mean, $5,000 out of your account. That's out of your, that's out of your pocket. Uh, I, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Didn't little TJ go to this, go to this spot, bro, before he got shut down? Not, not, not in Boston, but he went to the one in, uh, in Florida. He went to the one in Florida, and before he got shut down, um, he had, he had ordered that golden steak, right? And he sent it right back. He didn't send this shit right back. <laughs> that shit was a, it was just like a couple months ago. Dude, that shit, shit was funny. They had that whole presentation. They're too worried. They're too worried about copying Salt Bay's presentation instead of actually making quality food, making sure that the customers get what they deserve, which is. Quality food, quality service, and even more of a quality environment. It's like you can't, you can't really. Uh to what happened at Salt Bay Steakhouse in Boston. After opening up on the 18th of September 2020, the restaurant quote almost immediately began racking up health code violations. City inspectors reported that COVID-19 safety guidelines were being flouted, crowds were not social distancing, two fire exits were blocked, permits were not in order, the dishwasher was not running hot enough, and the refrigerators were apparently too cold, leading the government to shut the restaurant down only one week after opening. In the meantime, Salt Bay posted this 
this seemingly wholesome family photo to his Instagram, yet this would also end in another wave of criticism. Turkey chef Salt Bay meets mother after two years, criticized for not looking after her. It seems Salt Bay was getting loads of backlash in every situation, regardless of whether or not he deserved it. For example, when a waiter at one of his restaurants accidentally dropped a steak, Salt Bay was getting roasted in the comments by people saying that he was going to charge them twice. People simply didn't like him, so when he'd actually do something deplorable in December 2022, the whole world took it as a chance to completely and utterly destroy him. After Argentina beat France in the World Cup final, Salt Bay waltzed onto the field as if he was everybody's best friend. He pestered Messi for a photo, snatched the World Cup from a baby, and bit down on one of the winner's medals, prompting negative comment after- Who are you? Literally, who the fuck are you to even demand the right to even do that shit, bro? Again, first of all, I think that he only took the picture so that you can get the fuck off the field and be a fucking normal ass civilian. I don't know why you think that you're just above everybody else, but like, bro, you need to get knocked down a couple pegs at least. Not even, not even a couple. You need to get knocked down like 25 pegs. You think that you're on the level of Donald Trump at this point. Like, you are not on the presidential status, nor were you ever even close to the presidential status. You had clout on Instagram and Vine, and then you take that clout, you ran with it, and then you didn't, you didn't run with it well enough. You were like a toddler learning how to run, but you never learn you never fully ran you were like that one kid off the simpsons that not the simpsons it was american dad you the the one science experiment kid from american dad the one that had the leg extensions like you you didn't you couldn't go nowhere bro like you took two steps and fell you fell flat on your face and now everybody's seeing that you are falling into this hit. He's like, bro, what? After negative comment, as well as an instant response from the media who wrote, Salt Bay was pathetically thirsty to get World Cup selfies and pissed off Argentina in the process. Only a day later, the FIFA president unfollowed Salt Bay on Instagram before launching an investigation into how Salt Bay was allowed on the field, revealing that only the World Cup winners and heads of state are allowed to touch the trophy during the closing ceremony, let alone kiss and disrespect it. The next day, Salt Bay tried to show that he and Messi were friends by posting a video of them together in his steakhouse. However, comments such as old video where Messi made a mistake visiting your restaurant showed that fans definitely weren't buying it. Excluding this video, Salt Bay provided no response to his World Cup behavior until just one month ago when he'd finally talk about the event in a tell-all interview. He stated, it was a combination of my love of Argentina and my excitement. I love Argentina. I've lived there. I went to support them. Many of the team have come to the restaurant. I didn't feel a stranger. It was a special moment. Moment. I can't do anything about the reason I was there, but I would never ever step on the World Cup pitch again. There were 2 billion people watching the World Cup. How many people are speaking about me? 5 billion, the whole world. I didn't go on the pitch with the per- Clearly it wasn't the whole world. But, you know, is your fault. Could have been a friend. You could have supported them. Stayed in the back. Could have been quiet. Watched from the sideline. You could have watched from the sideline. You would have just chilled. Chilled the fuck out. You could have watched on the sideline. And been a, a first person POV spectator. Which, you know, most of us could only dream to be sitting right there at that spot or even watching that spot of our favorite sports teams, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, soccer, even if it, or football, however you want to pronounce it. Um, like we want to have that first person POV too, but you know, sadly some of us can't afford that, but you are friends with the Argentina quote unquote friends. Your, your quote unquote friends with the Argentinian team, and that you are getting in 
easily, but then yet you show up and chew out like you're the hottest shit to ever step on the field with yet again. I asked this question. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> purpose of advertising. I just felt like it. Then there was a bit of a surprise. There were at least another thousand people on the pitch, but when they show the video, they make out it was just me. I never ever wanted to overshadow anything. I didn't like the attention, with the possible motive for the explanation being that things haven't been going so well for Salt Bay ever since that day. Just two weeks prior to giving that interview, Salt Bay had to close down his self-titled Salt Bay Burger restaurant in New York City, which had gained a reputation for selling $99 gold flaked milkshakes and a hundred dollar burger wrapped in gold foil on top of this gold bro the gold it's been reported that salt Bay steakhouse in greece is now receiving a third of the bookings it used to from 600 per day to approximately 200 per day while his london steakhouse which we discussed earlier as having some of the worst reviews in the city recently announced that they'd be reducing their prices in quote what appears to be a desperate bid to entice customers back through its doors over the last six months salt Bay has gained approximately 300,000 followers per month and while this is still a bafflingly high number for someone who's seen seemingly does very little, this is the lowest growth he's had on social media since first blowing up in January 2017. Well, makes sense. Oh, that was a lot to take in. That was a lot. I say bullshit to actually take it in right there. So yeah this is video one out of the three others the the other two that i'm going to record so with that said god bless you guys i appreciate all you guys that watch my videos first of all and leave a like or a dislike i enjoy either one it doesn't hurt me um so leave a like dislike i want to see more comments please and with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next video, which is probably like right after this. So, peace.